Warm greetings to everyone. Let me introduce myself. My name is Darko Znaur. I'm a doctor of environmental sciences with project references in 30 European and Asian countries. I work as an independent consultant uh, rendering services to a range of organizations including the World Bank, uh, OECD, the UN organizations, uh, the European Commission, several European universities, consultancies and foundations, uh, notably the Dutch Avalon Foundation with uh, which I've been working since 1992. I've been studying climate change since nearly 20 years, mainly in relation to agriculture and climate change was also an important element of my PhD thesis which dealt with environmental and economic consequences of large-scale conversion to organic farming. I studied biodynamic agriculture at Emerson College and since 2005 I've been serving as chairman of the Anthroposophical Society of Croatia. I would like to share with you two topics. Uh, with both topics I have first-hand experience. Climate change is one of the hottest and most controversial issues of our time. We all know that it is a very challenging topic with multiple layers and it is very difficult to grasp especially in relation to food and agriculture well a lot can be said about it but uh, for the purpose of this conference i would like to share with you two topics with uh, both topics i have first-hand experience the first topic is about the importance of the so-called true cost accounting in farming with special reference on climate change. The second topic is the impact of climate change on food quality, how climate change reduces its vitality and how we can assess food vitality using analytical methods developed by anthroposophical pioneers. Well, let me start with my first topic. It is about the true cost accounting in farming. Well, we all know that farming is a multiple objective and multifunctional activity. It is far much more than just production of cheap food and raw materials for industry and other purposes. Farming activities result in a range of environmental and societal hidden costs and benefits. But market very seldomly takes into account these externalities and internalize them in the price of agricultural produce. Biodynamic and organic farming, generally speaking, generate fewer negative externalities and tend to produce greater positive externalities than most other farming methods. It is therefore of the utmost importance to include these when we try to assess economic performance of biodynamic or organic farming. To do this, we can use various so-called true cost accounting methods. Uh, these methods enable us to assess and monetize hidden costs and benefits of agriculture and its societal consequences, environmental, economic and health consequences. This approach is particularly important if we advocate and want to know the consequences of widespread conversion to biodynamic and organic farming. I have led several studies commissioned by the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, Wallon Minister of Environment, provinces of the Northern Netherlands and Heinrich Boll Stiftung, in which we made an attempt to monetize both positive and negative environmental and economic consequences of total conversion to organic farming. We did this assessment for the three provinces of the Northern Netherlands, a region with probably the most sophisticated 
and the most intensive agriculture in Europe. We also did it for the Wallon part of, Bel of Belgium, for Croatia, Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Montenegro. Using various environmental accounting methods, we monetized the environmental damage to air, climate, water and soil arising from scenarios comprising a different share of conventionally and organically managed land. This environmental damage impacts human health and ecosystem services and bears costs for society. We expressed this environmental damage in a virtual currency that we called Futuro. So it is not Euro but Futuro. Because most of these environmental costs are not paid now, but those will have to be paid in future. We use these environmental costs to correct, so to speak, to clean the gross value added created by farming. And by doing this, we can uh, assess the so-called real economic value of farming which we expressed uh, in another virtual currency that we called Puro. So it's a sort of purified, purified Euro, if you wish. Unfortunately, in this presentation, we do not have time to go into details of the results of these studies, but you can find them if you type my name in Google Scholar. But it is interesting that in these assessments, uh, climate change accounts for only about one quarter of the assessed hidden costs. At the other hand, damage to uh, the human and ecosystem health caused by pollutants, notably by ammonia, accounts for about 50% of all hidden costs. So in other words, other costs seem to be more important than climate change. Well, that leads me to my second topic which is decline in food quality caused by climate change. Uh, well, the problem with the assessment I mentioned earlier is that it does not include the impact of climate change on food quality. Why is this important? Well, a vast body of scientific evidence shows that rising carbon dioxide in the atmosphere makes our food less nutritious robbing key crops of minerals, vitamins and other nutrients essential to human development. Well, if this is true, and I am afraid it is, it is of the utmost importance to make humanity aware of it. One of the ways how we can make this is to study further the paper chromatography method developed by two anthroposophical pioneers. Dr. Lily Colisco and Dr. Enfried Pfeiffer. This method that uh, they have developed has been around for a while, but I would like to show you its modified and I believed an enhanced version developed in Croatia. It has been completely unknown in the anthroposophical circles. Uh, this method seems to be capable of revealing vitality of food and food supplements, largely determined by etherical forces. The tested substance leaves a mark, a sort of its vitality print on the chromatography paper. We do not have time to go into more details about this, but if you are interested, you can find more information about this food quality testing method at the web page biochroma.eu. Once more, biochroma.eu. Basically, vital substances always show a flower or coral like pattern, while substances with poor vitality lack that. Let me show you a couple of examples.
So let me conclude my presentation. I have presented you two tools which I believe are very relevant in the framework of the discussion on climate change, the importance of true cost accounting in farming and biochroma, a modified paper chromatography revealing food quality. I hope you will find them useful. Both these tools can help us in opening the gates beyond a sheer materialistic thinking, accounting and perception of food quality. I would like to end my contribution with a couple of messages to the youth. Well, we all know that climate change is a huge problem, but please ask yourself whether climate change is really more critical than other pressing environmental problems, notably biodiversity loss and nutrients load into water. Please think also about the potential harmonic grip in relation to the climate change agenda tendency of using climate change in pursuing singularity, such as a global carbon fund to be financed through carbon taxes. Please think also about a very aggressive promotion of veganism. Um, that kind of attitude completely overlooks the role of livestock in ecosystems. And it is very relevant in the uh, discussion on climate change, but please think whether there is uh, also another dimension that is a kind of hidden beyond uh, promotion of veganism. The same goes for uh, concepts like soilless farming, like uh, vertical farming, uh, hydroponic production, etc. All those things, uh, well, at first glance look like a great uh, solution for climate change problems, but please do rethink about it. Last but not least, I would also like to draw your attention to the uh, Rudolf Steiner's lecture given on the 9th of November of 1990. It is a GA191. Well, in that lecture, he explains how we as human beings are through our will connected with the Earth's forces of decline, whereby we continually build up the Earth by the power of our intelligence, our thinking. Of course, feeling is the bridge between the two, our will and our thinking. It is a very, very important uh, lecture in the context of the discussion of climate change. Well, at the very end, I would like to say the following. Please do stay alert, think with your own head, but also using your heart and act responsibly. And I do hope that our roads will cross soon again in life. Well, wishing you all the very best. Bye.